All right, tonight we're going to Belitz, Belitz, Germany. This is a small village. Can you pronounce the real, um, Heilstatten? Heilstatten. Heilstatten. Oh, man, that sounds like Hitler-ish. I mean, honestly, it's a harsh lang- yeah. like language sound to begin Belitz with. Belitz Heilstatten. Did you know that we, uh, w- Colleen's on our list for Surprise Shot. She's number, number na- at this point, number six down the list. But we have somebody, our first, like, continental European supporter from... The Netherlands. Yeah, but we've had British people support us, like Alex and Darren. I know, but I mean, like, another outside of an English-speaking country. You know? Oh. It's our first. You didn't say that. What do you mean That's it's our first? Meant. Our first Supremo. We have we have listeners in every different country. I Even, know, like, China. In, but I mean, like, Taco Supremo that I sent oh, a thing. Oh, supporters. Yeah. That Supremo. you sent a thing to. I sent the thing no. to it. And it wasn't Netherlands. I... It was Neverland. Netherland. Oh, shit. Well, maybe she's not going to get it then. <laughs> well, Captain Hook might. I hope, yeah, hopefully. Anyway, it's a neighbor of Germany, and that's why I their said that. Plan, their flag is red with a cross, isn't it? Or is that... Holland? What, Germany? Netherlands, isn't their flag red with a... Um, a, um, a, a, a I don't think a, so. It's orange, isn't it? I thought ne- it had the blue Netherlands. cross. Whoa, this looks like a peen flag. with balls we, hanging down. I think they should probably go get that checked out. Tonight, we are talking about the pink giant. This is a story that no one has ever covered and I know that for a fact I mean I didn't I didn't actually look that up or anything but there's no fucking way no way <laughs> just us but this is a an insane in the membrane case insane crazy in the membrane. crazy case this case will blow your lo- mind blow your mind so we're what nothing you we're going to 1991 oh, alright my birth nope. my birth my birth man fuck the 2000s dude you know what I let's bring back the 90s like what do I have to do it's coming back man? in fashion right now mm-hmm. no like I feel like I should go purchase some butterfly clips and I will be <sighs> right in with the cool kid like let's bring rad back that's an rad. 80s term rad. No, it's not. yeah I think it is an 80s term really? 80s yeah yeah and it's like a back to the future term tonight there's a crazy case if you're watching this live stream you can see where we're at on Google Earth all the photos will be on talkmer.com this is one you definitely don't want to miss you at least have to see what the pink giant looks like ho, ho, ho. that's the killer's Giant. moniker also he's known as the billets killer which we're here on live chat now the billets herstatten okay would you mind zooming out just a little bit so i can see like we're in he just really wants to look at we're that. in germany phallus yeah he does man that's, that would hurt going in that's a that's a thing that a lot of men enjoy doing is looking at phalluses anyway see, the problem is scroll, move out the problem is y'all never play with the balls ew well, stop all right. scroll out oh let's see where nicole's been she's been here and here Actually, no, I haven't. Here, here. Well, tell us about Belitz, because the killer was actually tried in Potsdam. Uh, I mean, wasn't there, weren't there some significant trials in Potsdam from World War One or Potsdam, like, agreement? What do you think? Something? You, oh, there's a 100 year old Nazi secretary who's in trial now. Really? And you yes. Know, you know what she got? What? She just got sentenced two years probation. But then they can't. I mean, she's a it's a I mean, woman. She's literally 100 years old. I get it. Yeah, also. but I, I know. But also, she didn't really. She was a, a secretary. I mean, she like knew about all the concentration camps. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is a. Bel- so we're at Belitz Heilstatten. Very Heil Heilstatt. Heil, Zig Heil. Is that what you want to? say Jen? No. Nope. Not what she said. So this is actually a lot smaller than I thought it was. And that big old penis. God, man, I wish mine was that big. At least <laughs> wide. Let's start here in 1991. This is where we're starting. We're going to a pine forest. I couldn't, is this the Black Forest? I couldn't find out exactly where. There was no trails or anything. Okay. It was it was probably like a little path, I would imagine. Maybe like over here. Walking in here. Mm-hmm. And, and now looking at this little village. That's what it's called, a village. Mm-hmm. It's very underpopulated from what I thought. So if you're walking in this little clearing right here, Jen, you may be the only person who has walked in this clearing in the last week or so, Mm. right? You're out getting your jog on. I got to look good for live stream. And then you meet a man. What kind of man? I meet a man. That's something that doesn't happen. You made me the protagonist of the story. Jen, what if you meet the man of your dreams at the party tomorrow night? I won't. You sound so sure. Jen. Well, I know that I know everyone that's going to be there tomorrow. What? What if, what if you don't? They're all married. Oh, that's even what better. What if there's someone else that's there that you don't know? Tonight we're going to Belich. I don't know exactly where this 
this happened. But a little trail like this, Mm -hmm. which looking at the village, not many people would walk in. Tamara Petrovskia, she is walking in the pine forest. She is walking with her three-month-old baby in a carriage. Now, as I said, this is a very small village and nothing ever happens here. So, yeah, you're not you're not going to see anyone on the trails. You're not going to come in contact with anyone or maybe one person. But you're also not going to get brutally murdered because it's such a small village. Well, so and we don't I mean, like, I feel like because we're doing this case here, I would beg to differ, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. She's walking. She's actually pushing her baby, three month old baby in a in a stroller. She's actually going to a Russian military hospital, Berlich Hallstatten, which I guess is on the, the cusp there in Germany. Wait, 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 wait. It was a Russian military hospital? That's what it said. So, probably Soviet. What, what year did you say this was? 1991. Year. So, okay. Oh, so this is like just as the Berlin Wall is falling, <laughs> East and West Germany, Soviet versus All right, maybe I'll just say Germany. Allied. She's walking to a hospital because her husband worked there as an army doctor. Now, she has a three-month-old baby. First baby, she's walking, it's walk, taking a stroll in beautiful Berlitz. I mean, look at this place. If you're on the Google Maps or just go to Google Earth, I mean, look how beautiful this is. I mean, it is so green and lush. I mean, this is a recent Sky uh, satellite photo here. Look at the trees. There's a lot of places to do activities here. So she's walking her baby. She's pushing her baby. She's going to see her husband who worked as an army doctor. And all of a sudden, I would say a, a guy popped out and surprised her. Hi, here I am. I'm going to kill you. But that's really not what she was thinking because this This man had been watching her and he had positioned himself behind a tree, a pine tree. And all of a sudden she's walking. Now, this is 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And like I said, as you saw the the map, there's no one else there. It's just her pushing her baby. And, And a man who has been watching her for at least 30 minutes coming down the trail jumps out. All right. So if a man jumps out, maybe he has a knife. Oh, my God, that's scary. But this man was different. This man, he wasn't wearing pants. This man wasn't wearing a shirt. He wasn't wearing anything besides, quote, a bra and knickers. Wasn't prepared for the bra comment. I, I was thinking you were about to say loincloth. <laughs> I don't know. What's a loincloth? I thought he was going to say that he was like, only wearing shoes. Just something to cover his loin. Yeah. This is going to get fast and furious real quick. So make sure you hold on. It's going to get bad. A man. So he's wearing bra and panties. No, a man jumps out wearing a bra and knickers, which are panties. And not only that, but this man is six foot three. He's got uh, pretty long hair and he just jumps out. Now, this is Russell Williams in the middle of the day. And this giant, I mean, six three is pretty big. He, he's tall. He tall jumped, enough for me. He jumps out. He's just wearing basically a Speedo at this point. And I, and I do Acceptable have Acceptable swimwear in, in Europe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but in the middle of the forest. Yeah, weird. Why was he looking, wearing a bra? Looking back at the Google Earth. Did he the, need? A bra? Where's the ocean here? There's no ocean. None. He is in the forest wearing nothing but a bra, like a brassiere. I don't really know what that fucking is. Bra brassiere is, is a bra. Oh, that makes sense. He's wearing a brassiere and knickers. He jumps out and before she... Ha- now, this is a mother. A young mother. She's 32 years old. Young mother pushing her baby. Oh, shit, so sorry. Be- before she had time to do anything, to even think about how absurd this is, this random guy jumping out out, dressed in nothing but a brassiere and knickers, this is going to get crazy. This man jumps right in front of her. First thing he does is grab the baby. Oh, no. As I said before, she is pushing a three-month-old baby. and He it, just grabs the baby or she grabs the whole carriage and runs away with it? No, he grabs the baby out of the carriage. Oh. Rips it out of the carriage. Oh, no. All right. The mom is still in shock. She she doesn't do anything because she, you know, it's happening so fast. This happens within seconds. This guy grabs this baby and pulls him out of this baby carriage. Pram. What does he want with the baby? Yeah, pretty weird. And then with all of his strength, now he is a six foot three built guy. Mm-hmm. With with all of his strength, he takes the baby by the legs and smashes him on an oak tree. Oh no. No. No, why? Over and over and over.
over. It said killing him instantly, but we don't really know. I don't like that. I will no- I will say that the baby did die of, quote, severe cranial injuries. Oh. The mom now is in shock still. Who is this guy? And now she's, he just grabs the baby? Like, just- this is within the first 10 seconds. So now she is trying to, quote, pull her baby's dislocated corpse, end quote, mm-hmm. from the killer's arms. At that point, this guy dressed in knickers and a bra, 6'3", the pink giant, throws the baby on the ground like you would a spike in a football if you just made a home run pass. You throw it on the ground and then he jumps straight on the mother. This guy throws this baby on the ground and at that point he jumps on the mother. Crazy, eh? Uh, that's terrible. He rips off the mother's, rips her shirt open, rips off her bra and then strangles her with it and then he rapes her mm. and then he just leaves. He just walks away. Terrible. He walks away. He walks away with wearing nothing but literally panties and a bra. He's walking through the woods. That's so weird. It's so it's so weird. What Thank he you. Gonna, does he really have fucking weird? Does he have like a, a wig and a dress or something he's gonna put on after? Ooh, good like, question. Is he like why is he wearing? I was I just want to know why he's wearing a bra. Does he ha- like, like? Does he have man boobs where boobs? he needs it? So Natasha on live chat has a really good point. She said, "What's crazy is I think about scenarios like that and how I can defend my kids if something." like that were to happen. It's not that the mother didn't try to defend her baby. It, it just happened so quick. Like no, I'm saying, this was I in don't seconds. Th- I don't think that Natasha was saying the mother didn't defend no, her no, child. I, I think that it's just like, <clears throat> as a mother, you want to think you, about How that. do you protect you got, your... You got to get a hoodie. A hoodie? Yeah. yeah. Like in the blowfish? No. Like no, but Jen, like one of those al- <clears throat> the, the personal alarms that Jen, like if Jen, you have on a keychain. Oh, Jen, oh, who oh. the fuck's going to hear that out here? Huh? Uh, uh, is somebody going to hear a hoodie out here? It's not necessarily about who's going to hear it, but like you scare the person away like they have those you think that's gonna scare this person a 6'3 giant wearing panties and a brassiere you think he's gonna scare him away he just ripped your baby out of your stroller and like like I don't know like taking uh what I can think in my mind is like a sandbag I don't know maybe it's because I was in the military but you take a sandbag and you just hit it hard as you can like on a wall heavy as a sandbag (laughs) just he just smashes it that's terrible smashes the baby by his leg he's grabbing the baby by this is a three month old grabbing it and the mother's just sitting like like she can't even move like that's how shock works shock works it paralyzes you yeah the first thing she does obviously is grabs her baby but then i mean reading from the quote from one german newspaper it said the baby quote pull her baby's dislocated corpse the baby is completely nothing nothing is connected anymore that's because you have a six foot three strong guy like he's swinging a baseball bat did you but he's got the baby's legs did you all see the new footage of the Sasquatch, the drone footage? No. Is this a new thing? I'll share later. Okay. This is what this guy looks like. Ooh, he has a mustache and he's not a bad looking guy. for a mustache ride. No. I'm not looking for a mustache ride. What's a mustache ride? (laughs) It's uh, one of the Disney Park's new attractions, actually. (laughs) That is a sexual thing. That's, I never heard that. Seriously? You can't grow a mustache so it doesn't matter for you. I can grow this. This is growing. I just got a water it a bit. It's fully grown. It doesn't look any bigger than the first time you spit on it. Yeah, spit on your mom. Does he look like he would wear a, a brassiere and panties in the middle no. of a public? In the middle of a German forest. He looks like the guy that's playing Dodi um Dodi, 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 in, Yes, in the crown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He looks just like him. That guy's good looking. Okay. Gonna, no, he no, looks I, just like him. Yeah, Dodi sure he does. All right. So we're going to talk about this guy and then we're going to get into some more murders. If you're in the live chat, tell me who you think this guy is. I mean, with what I just told you, you. Like, tell me all about this he guy. He does not appear to be native German. So our perpetrator <laughs> is, he was, he perpetrated the crimes as a male. It looks like he transitioned to a female. Maybe he was confused at the time, but that doesn't make an excuse as to why he's dismembered a baby. Hey, all right, number one, he didn't dismember a baby. Does he just trans, uh, he, dis, dislocated, dislocated. Yeah. Nicole, can you please describe what this guy looks like? Which photo? The, both. Before photo, he... Okay, so in the first photo, he looks... Um, like he's a dark hair, dark haired mm-hmm. male Medium. with a mustache. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a black and white photo. I would say he looks very 
similar to who, the, the actor who's playing Dodi Fayed in this season of The Crown. Second photo is uh, a male transitioning to a female, longer hair, lighter brown, like light, almost blonde-ish hair, lighter eyes, and I mean, he's still got a strong, he or she still has a very strong she- jaw. He nose. is wearing lipstick, right? Yes. She. So She's this, wearing lip. Yes. Oh my God. Whatever. It, I'm just it, trying it, to be politically correct. Now he he's from Belitz. He's from that same okay. town, and that's a small town. However, he's killed all the other victims besides that one. Happened everywhere else besides really? Belitz. Not in his hometown. October twenty fourth, nineteen eighty nine. Let's go over the first kill this guy has had. This is crazy. So that one that I just talked about, that wasn't his first. That was actually the the fourth killed, but his fifth victim. Victim. He had he had someone that uh, survived, but that is his his fourth kill. Okay? okay, and that is almost about when he gets caught. So that's pretty much down the line. Jumping out, nothing but panties, brazier. Let's talk about the first one real quick. October twenty fourth, nineteen eighty nine. So two years before the the town of Dietz. Let's actually go there on Google Earth. So it is D E E T Z Dietz. Dietz. Deets. Give me the deets. Give me them deets. So let's see how far it is. Pretty far. It's pretty far. Yeah, yeah, that's far. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, So it was over here. Yeah, that's far. Yeah, that's Potsdam right there. Potsdam. So what do you think that is? Like, uh, I mean, it's not that that far. Like an hour drive, maybe? I don't know. But let's look at deets right quick. So there's the same thing. There's not anybody here. What do you think? Maybe a thousand people that live in this city? This village? Mm, Maybe not even. Very small village. So we're talking about the first murder here Mm -hmm. right now. October 24th, 1980. The town of Dietz. Now, he remembers this town specifically because he's been there plenty of times. Now, he's not from there. He's from Belitz. But he often travels to Dietz because he likes to hang out at the garbage dump. Kind yeah. of an odd place to hang out. Yeah. So this is a very small, very small village mm-hmm. of Dietz. And this guy on October 24th, 1989, he's in Dietz and he is in the garbage dump where you dump all, where where the, the city trash people bring all the, the shit, your Amazon boxes, and they dump it out in this central location. He gets his laundry from there. Oh. Don't worry about like what that means right now, but we're going to really get into like what his laundry is. He also gets his rubber dolls. His his, his quote rubber dolls and things like that end quote from there the rubber dolls are going to become important because that's how he likes to try things out like I said this is the first time he's killed he doesn't really know he's going to kill but he's at the garbage dump this is October 24th 1999 1989 and he didn't really find what he was looking for at the dump he didn't find the the, the panties he liked the, the ones that feel really good on him you know he, he wasn't satisfied so he says the following quote I found myself in a great disappointment and a great pain because the hope was not fulfilled. At this point, he's at the garbage dump. He needs fresh laundry, fresh panties. And he begins going around town, looking in, a, in apartment windows, little home windows, just kind of peeking in. And this is in, in the middle of the night. He's peeking in there and, and hoping he sees something that really attracts him. Now, he's not looking for women to rape, women to kill, or babies to smash. He's looking for those panties, those silky panties. Maybe the something that feel real good on his skin. He's looking through the windows like that. Something silky and frilly. He begins trying out the windows. Let's see what windows are open. You know, I, I do see some panties in there. Let's see if the windows open. He crawls through a few, but he doesn't really find anything he likes. Now, keep in mind, there are residents in these houses and they're all sleeping. This is real late at night. So at this point, he's wearing a bra and panties, but he has track pants on and a, a women's sweater. So he's not like like really crazy looking but the urge is is getting too strong and he he says later that he needed a, a woman who will quote perform sexual gratification together with me he opens the window of a 54 year old woman her name is Edetrod Nixdorf she is in her 50s and she is she's sleeping but she left her window open and he saw something in her house that he liked some lingerie or something she is a married woman but husband's not 
not home at the time. What I'm reading now is from uh, some German newspapers. They are translated. I think one of them's called Der Spiegel or some shit like that. But there's not many sources about this case. It's kind of really obscure, which I love. But also I love the fact that it's so fucked up. Mm. It's so fucked up and it's so obscure that no one knows about it. Like you usually don't get those fucking things, right? Edel Child, she's sleeping, but she hears somebody crawling through her window. She wakes up to this guy, the 6'3 guy. He's just like going through her laundry, her panty drawer. And the first thing she says is this. Pig, bitch. No, she says, pig, bitch. She's screaming. Oh. I'm reading it how it's written. I don't know what you want me to do. Pig, bitch. With a rake, she tries to fight back. He forces her down, drags her into the house, and with a hammer, possibly, hits her head so that the brain ruptures and the bones of the skull burst. He strangles and throttles until he until nothing more stirs. Oh, my goodness. They don't know what he used, but they think it's a hammer. And he didn't bring it with him. He just found it. It was there. A hammer. Something strong maybe a pipe she's like pig bitch saying there's a pervert she grabs a rake and she starts swinging it at him now she's she was in bed like a minute before now she's out and this is a whole new thing he wasn't even trying to wake her up he just wanted the panties she is swinging the rake at him he picks up whatever's heavy maybe a hammer smashes this 54 year old woman on the head multiple times cracks her skull completely open and then drags her through the house she is dead now from what we know we don't know for a fact but he does does wrap her and this is that 54 year old woman he wraps her in a blanket and he says it was to quote hide her so that i can later satisfy myself together with her and in court he would say the following i simply had to have the woman under my control i wanted to force her to rest in order not to lose again what i already had in principle end quote it reminds me a lot of jeffrey dahmer yeah. he likes that control he wants to actually be in control which is the reason he's going to make sure his victims are dead before he rapes him. He is a necrophiliac, but only because he wants to make sure that they're in complete control. He has the control and then he he's going to rape her. Mm. So he has smashed this woman's head multiple times with a hammer, had wrapped her up in a blanket, drug her through the home. And then when she was dead, that's when he can have his way with her. All over a pair of panties. Yeah. At this point, he grabs several candles, which is one of the things that he liked about this house. The other ones didn't have, but she she had several candles on the uh, the entryway table. He liked that. And I'll, I'll tell you why he likes that here in a minute. But they were lit too, or some of them were lit. He takes those candles and he forces those candles into every orifice of the woman's body. Oh, now, nice. we don't we don't know if she's dead yet or not. She may have been alive, but when police found her body, her genitals were completely burnt and her anus was completely burnt. The so can- he took a lit candle and... Yeah, a lit candle. Mm. There were burnt candles found everywhere plus oh the skin goodness. was torched the the genitals the anus and the mouth was torched he loves the the reason I'm saying that he loves the candles is because it's very it, it goes with the psychology which we're going to talk about a lot because this is fucking crazy mm. when she was in his control basically when she was dead then he raped her he then positioned the body spread eagle with her panties outlining the corpse so all the panties he didn't want to take with him that were in her panty drawer he made like a you know you see those chalk figures from a crime scene Mm -hmm. he basically made that around her dead corpse she was positioned in a very sexual degrading way not sexual but degrading really made her look you know like you would just make it make it look terrible right Mm -hmm. very degrading position she's dead and the panties are surrounding her body that's the guy we're talking about fuck i'm drunk what the fuck it was the absent listen that that's that's that is wild that i i haven't heard anything like this before (laughs) it's that's because they don't cover this shit on morbid. But I'm just saying, like, you, you, for, uh, <laughs> I thought one thing, and now I don't even know what to think because well, the you're first, drunk. I am too. Yeah. I'm just saying is that the first story you covered is he was dr- he jumped out at a woman with bra and panties on. So of course you think oh, when we saw the after picture that this person is struggling with an identity and they're trans they're transgender. But and then but he wanted you said that that they wanted someone to perform sex acts with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they wanted 
someone to perform sex acts with them only when they were dead. That's a really good point you Mm -hmm. just made. And the wording here really tells you about his psychology. Okay, the wording here. And I'm going to read this again because it's so important. He says a woman who will, quote, perform sexual gratification together with me, end quote. So it's he knows he's killing and raping somebody, but it's almost like a consensual kind of I want someone who will perform this gratification with me. Right. It but sounds like someone who's he's looking for a partner who will consent mm-hmm. and perform sex acts. Exactly. With them. But he's not. He's killing and raping them, which is as, kind of as so, after they've already deceased, after they've been deceased. Right. Yeah. But so that's his psychology. This, is, this psychology is crazy. I'm very interested in this in this case. This is this is this is different than what we've gone over before. Oh, so all my other episodes have been shit. That's that's <laughs> literally has nothing. To, no, that's not what I said. I'm just saying that this I, this case is I just this is a different case. Like it's weird. It's a different case. He waits six months. There's an escalation period. Usually killers do that. They have a cool down period and they they wait. So this was six months later. The second kill from him. Her name was Krista Naljuk. She was 55 years old. So there is something weird, right? This man who is in his 20s at this point is killing women that are way older, 50, 60, even even uh, a 70 year old at one point. Now, can I ask a question? When did when did this person start identifying as a female? Did they always identify as a female? Were they interested in only females? Not that it. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't matter, but it's just interesting. I guess I don't. I don't know. I'll get to that. So t- right now. Now, from here, now this is six months later. So if you're on the Google Earth with us, you see Dietz. Mm-hmm. Now we're Dietz going to Watson. now we're going to Furch. So here we go. Oh man, it's like right over. It's like right over. I mean, you get this walking distance. And again, I don't know. that seems a little further than that to me. Really? Yeah. Was Dietz like right over here? No. Yeah. Wasn't it? Oh, there's Berlitz. Berlitz. That's where he's from. Berlitz. He killed in in um Dietz. Mm-hmm. Dietz. Mm-hmm. Which is right here. Okay. So his second one was right here. And then now he's going to... That's not walking distance. That's far. Man, y'all are fucking lazy. I could walk that shit. No. Man, y'all are fucking... That's like, not in one day. I'm gonna fucking get an Uber and all this stuff. I ain't got time for that shit. Whatevs. Look, now here he goes to Furch. All right, there's a beautiful river here. This is a nice part of Germany, you know. So I've only been to Germany once when I was like a three year old. And to think about it, this guy is is already he, he is already doing something that is dangerous for him to get caught. This man is a six foot three individual who is terrorizing and raping and killing women in very small villages mm. that are next to each other. Obviously, when I think of that, you think of like Ted Bundy, which he didn't really plan anything out because the urge was just too strong. He would take any opportunity he could just to just to you know relieve himself so you know what i'm saying like that he's not really planning anything and he's it's like all right when's the, when are you going to catch this guy that's over six foot wearing panties and, and killing women older women and yeah. raping them like well i guess i'm just confused because like at first he was looking through the trash for panties and then he's looking at other people other women's homes for panties but then he kills the women for panties but well, he, he they they rape them um, I, I don't i'm just confused i guess yeah yeah, we know. We've, we've known that for since we've met you. May 24th, 1990, six months after the, the murder we just talked about, this lady, Krista, 55 years old, she was choked to death with her own brassiere, and she was found where? Where do you think? In woods. this? Yeah, that. where else besides the woods? Pavement. No, th- this guy hangs out in two places, the forest and- the dump. There you go. She was found in the garbage dump of the city of Furch. Oh, no. So this is Furch right here, and- I mean, we found the other garbage dump. This is a very small village. Yeah. So she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know why? Because he was at the garbage dump by himself, finding panties, finding undies, meundies.com. He was finding undies that he wanted to wear. And she just happened to walk by and catch him doing this. So she was a victim. And this is a 55-year-old woman. Her body was found a day later in the dump, in the rubbish dump, covered with cloth and broken glass and 
and just trash, discarded food, That's everything. terrible. You know what it sounds like almost? She- it sounds like this person had an identity issue, and I am not defending. I'm just saying. <sighs> this person had an identity issue. They thought, well, older women go to bed early, so I can, I mean, they're looking through mm-hmm. trash in the dump for panties. They don't find anything they want, so they go to older women's households. Why do you keep calling her a day? It's one dude. It's this guy. This guy. I'm trying to be politically correct. So what I'm saying is that it sounds like they're targeting older women because they think that they're going to be in bed asleep later. And then when the women wake up, they're looking through their panty drawers. And then when the women wake up in the middle of the night, they kill them and rape them. Yeah. But but then they dump them in the dump. And then they're all, I don't know. I mean, that's just what I think. I had her breast in my hand. I got so excited that I could not stop myself. Around the corpse. Now, this is in the dump. So around the corpse, in the dump was burnt out candles. Like I said, and I'm going to talk about why he likes the candles, but they really got him horny, these candles. But also, this happened six months later. So now there's a link. These villages, yeah, they might not be walking distance, but they're pretty fucking close to each other. There's not a lot of people either. Yeah, so, they're all very remote towns. Yeah, so two bodies, both older women, found with candles mm-hmm. around the body with genitals burned, they, and the candles are burned and everything else. Obviously, it's a it's the same guy, you know? Yeah. Plus, I want to say a lot of these places, they find the footprint of this man who wears a size 12 shoe, you know, 12 and a half or whatever, the, this huge footprint that most Germans don't have. So they're look they're at this point looking for a a literal Sasquatch in the forest. That's like what the video that they just put out in 2022. All right. So two months later, this is July 8th, 1990. Another victim, a 58 year old woman in a garbage pit in the village of Wusht. It's the profile. W-U-S-T. Wust. They say W's like V's. What the fuck? Double V. All right, so the papers... Oh, here it is. Wutsch Bradenberg. Here we go. Furch, right here. Mm -hmm. That's Furch. And we're going to Wust right here. So pretty close. Yeah, ish. Pretty close. And and again, a very small town. Well, this is like a huge... Well, today that looks like a big shopping mall or something. I don't know. Maybe this is where... uh, It's like a Nazi emporium or something. Anyway. So in in the... Yeah, okay. So very small town, you know. I'm sorry. I, when you said Nazi Emporium, I automatically thought of Rat Race. Edith Weber, 58 years old. She was found two months after Krista was found, the the other elderly woman. She was found July 8th, 1990. Where do you think she was found? In this village of Wust. The dump. In the garbage pit. She was raped and beaten to death. Workers had found her body when they were literally dumping out garbage. The, the people that go and collect the garbage for the town, they drove the truck back to the garbage dump and were dumping garbage. They found her body just sitting there or just laying there in the pit. She was covered in trash, dirty rags, broken glass, and even broken bed springs. They find her and they're really shocked, really shocked to to learn that she's alive. She's still alive. Whoa. Barely. She's wow. barely hanging on. She's got brain damage, but she is alive. Mm. So, and with this one, this killer would say, quote, I was completely upset with having the woman under my control, end quote. All right, let's go over this guy's background. His name is, his first name, I guess, before he turned to a woman is uh, Wolfgang Schmidt. But now his name is Beatty Schmidt. B-E-A-T-E Schmidt. B. Beat Schmidt. Beatty. That's his name Beatty. now. When he was a child, we're talking seven years old, he had a hobby that his family didn't know about at first, but when they found out, they were completely disgusted. His hobby was he liked to go through his mother's underwear drawer when kind of weird yep. she, yeah when she was like in the kitchen or something he would go through there Wolfgang Schmidt remembers that he was six or seven years old when he discovered his mother's underwear in the closet he also remembers that he was quite excited he put on the underwear bras knickers petticoats and felt overwhelmingly pleasant feelings but it was even more beautiful for him he found out in the course of time when he soiled the laundry i.e. made it wet and cried like a baby 
He's seven years old. Seven. He does have a younger brother at this age. So he's seven. He's got a three-year-old younger brother. The family, the mother and the father, who were not abusing him in any way, they started wondering where the mother's underwear is going. And it could only be him. And they found that underwear in both the garden of the residence and the barn that they had. Now this guy, so he loved the feeling. I don't know why. He just like loved the feeling and then he just put it on and he's just like, oh, that's so comfortable. Ugh. Then he started getting these little kinky feelings like, oh, what if I, what if I piss in my mom's panties? And what if I defecate in them? You know, it would make me so bad. So he would do that. But then he would hide them because obviously you can't put them in the laundry because the mom didn't do that. So he started soiling himself in them. And that really made him, that really turned him on. He would wear his mother's bras. He would masturbate. Now, this is seven years old. I don't even know. That's young. Very yeah. fucking young, right? That's like, like seven years old. That's, that not that before you really know what that means to do? Yeah. So, yeah. well, actually, he wore them at seven, but at nine, he started masturbating in them. He started- Even s- still, that's young, s- right? Soiling, yeah. soiling himself. He would pee in them. He would just relieve himself. He would defecate in them. He would feel all good, so warm, and he would even ejaculate in his mother's panties. At nine? And then, yeah, at nine. And then he would hide them because obviously you can't can't put them in the, the laundry. The father- father went out looking for the mother's panties knowing what the kind of what to expect and he found them all in the barn they were all soiled so he had a lot of explaining to do lucy you got some explaining to do so that's awkward the filling of the feces in the panties would really get him hard and that's what he would do eventually nine isn't that like young for yeah eventually they locked the panty drawer i would have killed him if my son did that I'd, i'd kill him I'd, I'd kill him. I mean, he'd be dead, but that's just me. They locked the panty drawer so that he couldn't get into into him anymore. So then he is locked out of what he loves to do. And you can't you can't take this away from me. I'll find it somewhere else. So what do you think he starts to do? He starts going around town and digging through people's trash cans. People throw away stuff. People poop in their panties and then they throw them away. They don't wash them. I'm gonna find them. Like, is this a common thing that happens though? Like, No, that's why I want to do the story is is completely fucked up like this is yeah not, you think <laughs> yeah. this is not a common thing no uh-huh. no i'm just saying like i don't think that's a thing that happens a lot <laughs> where people throw away their underwear shram says i'm the trash man what's that from that's from oh, it's always sunny <laughs> the trash so he goes into people's trash outside their house and he eventually starts looking into their houses and trying to find panties now he is nine years old at this point he eventually finds his favorite place in the world where he's going to hang out for the rest of his life until dump. he's arrested the dump the garden garbage dump one man's trash is another man's fetish Damn. he started hanging around this and also the woods the murders we talked about so far especially the one of the last ones he did with the mother and the baby was mm-hmm. in the forest mm-hmm. so it's either the forest or the dump that's where he kills right or, or in some cases where he gets caught going into your house yeah in the forest there's illegal dumping sites and he found that out at an early age he would go in there i mean every forest you go to every uh woods you go to people just dump trash mm-hmm. and he would find pan and stuff out there so that's where he started hanging around so that's why he's out there wearing fucking panties right because he's finding them out there he can't walk past trash anymore he searches until he can be sure that he has found all the laundry he can there must be more and more he hauls away bags deposits them in holes in the ground hides them in safe places in case he doesn't find anything then he puts them on covers himself with excrement masturbates no one is allowed to see him no one must know about the laundry he fears nothing more than having his laundry taken away from him. So he was in the forest because he wanted to be by himself and then those people walked by and he had to kill him because he thought that they saw him being... Well, they did see him masturbating with feces all over himself, masturbating in a pair of panties a lot of the times, yeah. So, but this guy is also just really fucked up in the head. I don't know. But yeah, that's a good point. He is an opportunist killer. He's not stalking these victims like some some uh, you know criminal justice professor. When he was 10 years old, his mother called 
caught him in the hayloft in the barn. He was standing there half naked. He had just managed to get rid of the dirty laundry and to wipe off the excrement on his body, end quote. So now he's starting to find more. You understand this guy has got mental fucking issues. Yeah. He start, now he's 10 years old. He's hiding this weird ass fetish with dumping in his mom's panties and rubbing it and masturbating in her bras. He's hiding this at 10 years old. So now he's getting tired of that because, you know, that it's like when you do missionary all the time, you, you kind of want to try dog style, right? Getting a dog I in the dog. Try, I, I wouldn't know. So he's trying to think of creative ways now at 10 years old to satisfy himself. And that's when he does some things like he puts his the, he puts his mom's panties on backwards. He soils them. He's in them and jerks off in them. Then he flips them around so they're pressed against his genitals and he Ew. wears them all day. Ew. So he would also run around at night wearing nothing but a bra and knickers and he would run into the garden. Now this is when he's growing up in his teenage years. The mother not only noticed that the underwear was go- like he not only was he not stealing hers anymore because it was locked up but she noticed that there's more underwear showing up like in the barn right. Mm. And the uh, the father beat him for it. He says quote beat theatrics yelling scolding and being grounded not to play with any other children. So anyway that's that's basically this guy right here. Now when he was 20 years old he decided to enlist as a cop. So now this guy's a fucking cop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's a cop? <laughs> he was a cop. He had to do something for work. And he, he enlisted in the in the police force at Brandenburg. And during that time, he, he was a decent cop, but he would like to, when he gets called for a domestic alter, altercation in the house, he would kind of sneak away and, and go through the panty drawers and stuff like that. He started a sizable collection, stealing from people around the town and his own co-workers. That's when he also introduced the candles to himself. It was, quote, like feeling in the seventh heaven, end quote. That's what he says. He would put on these lingerie and he would he would light these candles and the smell would just get them all hard and he would just soil himself. It was just what he loved to do, right? So what do you guys think about this? I, I don't know what to think That anymore. is gross. Yeah. It's, it's especially hard when you have an officer of the law become a perpetrator or a perpetrator become an it's officer of the law. Yeah. It's... It, that it's I mean and if we even talked about it earlier today kind of when you had a criminologist mm-hmm. arrested as the murderer for those Idaho victims but it Gross. someone who knows who is close to the law and knows what not to do and knows you know what you should not be doing and how to protect people being someone who is s- perpetrating crime against someone else it's is really it's really upsetting well see if this is upsetting this is him right here this is a big dude. I mean, he's muscular, man. Yeah. He is huge. This photo right here. So at, at this point, he's locked up. This is, he's in a psychiatrist. Well, we're going to go more over his background or his uh, kills, but he is at this point in a sci- uh, in a mental institution. And that's So him. was this before he was con- no, 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 convicted? This, no, this was after. But I wanted to show you he, what he looks like. He's able to lounge around like a pool at the facility? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he is. That's well, it's Germany. Nice Germany. Well, you know, they can't do the death penalty. Really. That's not a thing. They've killed oh, too many. Yeah. This is what it looks like. You know, when that mother was pushing her baby, this is what she saw jump out. Yeah, he had a big dude. I mean, you know, wearing this stuff in a bra. I mean, it's just like crazy. This guy's, he's huge. Yeah. I mean, look at these shoulders. He's fucking huge. Yeah. I mean, this guy must be like at least 250. Yeah. He's a big guy. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just want to show you that. big person, regardless. Yeah. The fourth was an Inge Fisher, 34 years old. This was different because this was a younger lady. She was she was walking home. This was March 13th, 1991. This was eight months later. And I think, and I don't know for sure, but, you know, the last victim was found alive in the garbage pit. So I feel like he waited, let things cool off a little bit. She was walking home and he sprung out of the forest path, kicked her in the face, stabbed her to death. When she was dead, that's when he rapes her. And the hikers find her body three weeks later with her, quote, skirt pushed up and covered in mossy feet. The the fourth killed, we talked about.
about that, Tamara. The sixth victim were actually survivors, but barely. They were two girls, 12 years old each. Oh, no. Completely different. I mean, we started with older ladies. Now he's going to a 34-year-old. Now he's at two 12-year-old girls. These two girls, Jaina Harder and Jaina Wintland, they were in the village of Sputtendorf, which is relatively close, another small village. They were in the forest, and they were near a church. He jumps out wearing nothing but these panties and this bra, and he starts to try to... He has a knife with him at this point, and he starts slashing. This is also the first time he's trying two victims at once, so I think he's a little overconfident. Mm. He scars the face of one girl. She wiggles away, and she runs away. She's safe. She also got him in the face with her fingernail, and that's how police, you know, they're now looking for a guy with a big-ass scratch on his face. The other girl, he started stabbing, but somehow, I don't know how, maybe she bit him or whatever during all this craziness. She wiggled away, but barely survived. She ran, and she barely survived. She was severely injured, but she lived. Both girls lived. They gave a description to the police. Over six foot tall, blonde, blue eyes, and they li- they listed a $20,000 or 20000 mark reward uh, for the capture of him. Now, this is before I, well, I looked it up. Uh, Germany does the euro now. Because I was thinking, like, the mark's not worth shit, right? Anyway. Schmidt ran away, then in panic, across fields through the forest. It began to get dark. He passed a railroad track, a highway, a bridge. At a kiosk, he bought cigarettes and something to drink. He didn't know, he says, what actually was going on, only that it had failed once again. In a train station hall, he dreamed about the girls how it would have been if so he takes a train now he this is the night of the night of that he got this scratch on his face he jumped out in front of those two 12 year old girls he takes a train and quite a a far away he gets into another village and that is when he kills a 66 year old woman who he had crawled through her window so Mm. he is just ready to to you know rape at that point during all this he did have a normal sort of kind of life in 1991 he quit being a police after a year and a half thank god he became a farm worker he got a girlfriend he started living straight reminds me a lot of Jeffrey Dahmer remember he had a two year period Mm -hmm. where he is you know doing it for the lord and then that never really works then he gets worse than before he lived a normal life that didn't last that didn't last and then he started collecting again the hundreds and thousands of pastel black pink panties anything that he felt good on his body then he started strolling through the woods at the you know with with his girlfriend living with the girlfriend, he starts strolling through the neighborhood woods and, you know, German people were just like, I mean, there's a, there's a six fucking foot Sasquatch and pink, a pink thong walking through the woods. Like, maybe we should check this out type of thing. Because remember, they know that the, the murderer has a big foot and mm-hmm. six foot three is in a, in villages that small. It's, you know, it's pretty rare. So the police got very suspicious about those footprints. So let me go over his MO real quick. Opportunist killer usually he looks he doesn't stalk victims he's if a victim comes up he's going to kill him kill her he would only kill when his quote innermost desires end quote drove him to it that's what he said Mm. he wears women's clothes and if you want to read this this is actually really interesting this is the psychology here by a man who didn't actually cover this case because it was way before but this is uh this is in the 70s he wrote a book called fear lust and destruction and this is about the uh subject of fetishism. Ibrahim Shorts wrote on the subject of fetishism in his book, Fear, Lust, and Destruction. Taking position of and putting on maternal clothing means not only the satisfaction of desires for bodily closeness and warmth, but at the same time an archaic identification and fusion with the mother that is a momentary symbolic restoration of the symbiotic mother-child unity. Mm. If the, if his theory is correct, he is saying that this man is attracted to his mother. He has a love and hate relationship with his mother. Now think about it. And this guy continues, he says the following quote, in the case of a continuing primary identification with the mother, the awakening of genital phallic sexual strivings actualizes the fear of having to detach oneself from the mother. The fear is warded off by the fetish's attempt to reestablish unity with the mother through regressive revival of oral forms of the relationship. Basically, in a nutshell, I know that sounds crazy, but this is basically what he's saying. He has his love and hate relationship 
Number one, he he poops and pees and in these panties that his mother has, that his mother owns, he wears them and he poops and pees in them. He has this desire to bring himself back to babyhood. Mm. He needs to be coddled by the mother. Maybe he didn't get enough attention as a baby. He needs to feel like the mother is going to protect him. That's why he pees in her panties and stuff like that. Because, oh, the baby, you know, you can't hurt the baby. I'm just a baby. You know what I'm saying? Please, I, I need it. I'm just a baby. On the other hand, though, when he jerks off, master, when he masturbates into her panties, it is the opposite. It's a sign of rebellion. Like, no, I'm not a baby. I do what I want, you know? I'll jack off in these if I want. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't know if I buy the theory, but it's definitely very interesting. Yeah. That's why, you, you know, so he's definitely got mother issues. I'll say. I don't know. He's Yeah. So everyone, yeah. everyone at this point is looking for him. He's not doing himself any favors by hiding. You saw the Google Earth. If, if you didn't, the victims that he's killing are in neighboring villages right by each other. He's a six foot three guy wearing panties. Everyone's looking out to get him. On August 1st, 1991, two men that were jogging spotted this, quote, pink giant, which the tabloids have been calling him. And he was, quote, looking for some female person to perform these acts with me, end quote. They spot him. He didn't even notice these joggers at all. There were two men. He is in the forest by himself wearing nothing but an open shirt with a bra visible, a blue skirt, women's skirt pulled over his genitals, and he has a bra. He is masturbating into the bra, and he is just sitting there like, ugh. Okay, that was enough. That like, was like really graphic. <laughs> uh, I really, I, I think did, everyone on did not that, like really wishes that I didn't see that. Did not like that. Did way. not like that. <laughs> No, did not like that. So he is completely oblivious that there's two joggers just watching him. They stopped at this point. And then what do you think they do? They obviously run for their lives, right? Because they know this is the killer. No, they don't. They freaking man up and they rush this guy. Even though he's jerking his weasel, they rush him and they tackle his ass to the ground. Now, this guy's got his weans in his hands jerking it. He doesn't even see these guys. Tackles them. They take the belts that they're wearing. They strap them up and then they wait the police get there. So this guy is finally arrested, right? He's arrested court a year later in Potsdam, which Nicole has been to, obviously. He speaks in a high-pitched voice. He describes everything in detail. Not that he's bragging about it, but just that he was there. He says he doesn't remember all the details. He doesn't remember swinging the baby by its legs onto the oak tree. Ooh. But, you know, that's that's what happened, right? It, well, quote, yeah. Quote, I started looking for a rubber doll for masturbation. This is why he He's his MO, right? Is what he says. When I couldn't find one, I looked through the town's rubbish for something suitable. I couldn't find anything and I couldn't control myself any longer. Then I saw the the first victim. I was overcome with desire. I raped her after I killed her. And to my great to my great surprise, in my mind, she was still alive. When I put my hand on her breast, I became so excited I couldn't stop myself. So when asked about the baby, this was the first murder we talked about. He says, I can't remember remember, but there was, quote, something screaming out and crying, in quote. Maybe it was the child. So what do you think his sentence is? Is Germany, he can't get death penalty. Life. Well, I think he's in a mental facility. Well, okay. All right. For life. What was, okay. His sentence was life in prison with a minimum of 15 years. Well, <laughs> good. Well, I, I mean, wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. But, he but, only has to serve 15 no, no, no. years. His sentence was life in prison with a minimum of 15 years after 15 years life in a psychiatric facility which he is in now and he has a lot of freedom now. When he was in prison he decorated his walls, wore women's clothes, grew his hair out, wore makeup and in 2001 he petitioned the court that he wanted to become known as a female and he went from Wolfgang Schmidt to Brit Schmidt, Brit Schmidt and in 2009 he started hormone treatments, his tits got bigger his waist got slimmer but the court stopped at at, uh, the surgical procedures. They were like no, we're not going to let you do that. No surgical procedures. All right. I mean, that's fair. Why Why should the state pay for that? Right. Yeah, no shit. His younger brother said the following, quote, he is disgusting. I still don't want to, I still don't understand how he killed those women and the baby. He destroyed our family. Three potential employers wouldn't hire me when they found out I was his brother. He is very lucky to have been judged in Germany. In many other countries, he would have been sentenced to death, end quote. Another inmate moved into a cell. His or her name was Jen. 
twins. She was transmutated into Jasmine and transmutated or transgendered or whatever. They identified it as Jasmine. That's all you have to say. They identified as Jasmine. I'm not saying they because that's fucking stupid. It's a one person. They is plural. All right. Anyway, sorry, Jen. I know you have strong opinions about this. No, it's not even that I have strong opinions about this. I'm just trying to be like uh, identify as the, you know, I'm just trying to be correct. So this girl or guy named Jen or Jasmine moved into the cell and then she said that Germany is actually going to let her become a a woman and quote we're both going to become women but I'm really upset that I won't they won't give me a surgical operation anyway long story short Jasmine actually swallowed two razor blades because she was tired she was tired of getting raped by her her cellmate which was Wolfgang oh my god yeah yeah what wow I was not expecting that. Nope. Really? No. Out of all this shit, you weren't expecting that. No, shit. I wasn't. Okay. So she was found unconscious in her cell. And now she said that she did it herself to kill herself, but they kind of think that that's not the, the case. She was being, she was constantly being raped. And then, I mean, they, they can't prove it otherwise, but she says the following quote, I, I swallowed two razor blades. I wanted to die. Why? Because BD is jealous of me. Because I'm having the operation and she isn't. Mm. She was crying when she said this. She's been terrorizing me. And when we were alone in the shower, she raped me. Beatty says about her prison life. Now, she's she only spent 15 years in prison. Quote, the others are nasty to me. They say that if I had the operation. Don't do the voice. They say that if I had the operation, I could get a fat ass. That really hurts. Then I have to cry. I cry a lot now, but it helps me. So right now, it is in a mental institution for forever and she or he what is it he they she, she. i'm not it's saying not, they she, she you can say she she so right now be it be it is in a mental institution and she has free ability to roam around which is why you saw that photo right there mm-hmm. and let me see she she even gets escorted releases and so far she's really enjoyed that which is really good especially in october 2000 when accompanied by a nurse she goes and visits her mother nearly stabs her to death and then stabs the nurse. Then she flees from them and goes and beats a 60 year old woman to death and then steals her car. And then after that, Yikes. and then after that, she tells a newspaper quote, I've always been an honest skin, a good natured person. What? So I don't think that accurately describes Regardless them. of gender or how you identify, you're not, not, a, a, good good person. Person. So not a good person. So that is, uh, she's still doing her thing. Blue skirt, pink shirt. She's still in the mental hospital? Yeah, she they ain't no they, fucking way. They can't way. Let, her, <laughs> let her out, for sure. I mean, they the escorted releases, she almost killed her, killed her own mother. So they can't put her in prison again? No. I mean, she's, she's uh, or he is all fucked up in the head. I mean, get, get, they got, he, wow. he's got mental problems. Need, need heavy medication. Mm, well, I I mean, I don't agree with that necessarily. I think that <sighs> they should be in prison for attempting to murder someone if they're even if they were outside of prison and then were in the mental facility, then I don't I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that, but Here's you know, another Here's another photo of them. She got old titties. Yeah, she started her hormones, but not yeah, surgery. She, yeah, she's doing a shit ton of hormones. Apparently, she's still alive, you know. Yeah. Hopefully, goddamn, she'll never get let out. I mean, she literally got an yeah. escorted release and almost and and killed somebody. <laughs> she yeah. killed somebody. Yeah, I would assume that <laughs> with with <laughs> the, the number of shit. crimes, like uh, that's just a danger to society. To and and you guys saw this. This is her. This is her in the the mental institution. So she has free reign and she. There's photos of her walking through the uh, the hospital, like this photo right here that you just saw. You know, she's she's um uh, she's actually like walking through the hospital, like no no handcuffs or anything. She well, at least she hasn't killed anybody since she's been there. But anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoy that. Until next time, good night, you lovely lovely people. <laughs>